My name is Bill Kenny, and I'm pitch. And uh, welcome to the webinar uh, this morning, where our real goal is to overview the uh, the Top Gun program use of the our tool, which is called Test My Pitch. So um, we really welcome you here this morning, and uh, we're excited that uh, you're going to be using the tool. And I uh, hope it really uh, creates good value for you. Our whole goal is to help you uh, draft, post, and get as much feedback as possible on your pitch. And really, the, the goal of the tool is that you sort of uh, draft, post, get feedback, draft, post, get feedback. It's really an iterative process to come up with a good pitch. And you'll see as we go through the design to help you do that. Um, so uh, just a couple of rules about uh, using these tools. Number one, um, I want to make sure that everybody uh, is on the screen share. It looks a lot of people on, but I'm not sure if everybody is. But if you are sharing screens, you should see a, a screen with the uh, Top Gun logo and some people, three people holding their chin looking skyward. Does anyone not see that? Cool. I'm going to take that as a, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, good here. The other uh, thought, and we certainly want to have, uh, you know, any uh, one of the things that does happen on these calls from time to time is uh, we may get some feedback. And I just ask that uh, if you wouldn't mind putting your phones on mute unless you do have a question, that will help prevent anything like feedback or background noise if someone walks into the room to ask a question or barking dogs or screaming babies or <laughs> whatever might whatever might happen in the background. Uh, it'll just make the sound quality better, not only for you, you all, but also uh, we're recording this for anyone that can't make the call. So um, with those couple of thoughts, uh, I'm going to kind of launch into it here. And again, please interrupt me at any point in time. This isn't, this exercise isn't for my benefit, it's for yours, and, and I want to make uh, everything we're doing is clear and, and uh, makes sense to you. So um, uh, one of the things that we did actually this morning was we uh, uh, invited you all to the site. The site is a private site, uh, and you'll see the URL at the top left corner is topgun.testmypitch.com. You can only get into the site. Uh, by invitation. So I'm just going to click over to one of the invitations that went out. Uh, and so this is what you should have received in your inbox. If for some reason you don't see it in your email inbox, uh, then you should check your spam folder. It, you may be in a system that uh, uh, for some reason uh, filters the emails out. These are automated emails from our site. You'll see it. It comes from testmypitch.com opposed to an individual. Um, but uh, did anyone not receive that invitation? And it would have come about 8.30. This particular one looks like 8.36 this morning, so somewhere around 8.30. So I'm going to take that as uh, everybody got it. If you didn't, certainly let, let us know, and we'll be happy to, uh, to uh, send you the invitation so that you have it. But all you're going to do, and if you like, you can do this along with me, but all you're going to do is click on the Click Here button, and I'm actually going to go, as opposed to uh, creating someone else's account, I'm just going to show you my screen, uh, my profile screen, which is essentially your account, uh, excuse me, your account profile, which is what you, um, the information you fill out to, to create your account. So. You should see now on your screen uh, uh, an update profile screen. And this is the uh, information that you fill in to create your account. Uh, I do hear that somebody doesn't have their, uh, their mute button on. I'm hearing some background noise. So if you do uh, uh, not have your, your mute on, that would really help us out. Um, so in any event, it's just simple stuff. It's your name, email address. Uh, your whatever password you choose. There are some requirements around the password to improve security. What industry? X3 do um, require a little bit of explanation. So the next three, you, uh, you'll see they're all marked yes. So this receive emails when comment 
is posted. That is uh, that is to uh, let you know when a comment is posted about a pitch that you've created. So this is uh, would send you an email when somebody is remarked on one of your pitches. The uh, the next one receive a daily summary of new introductions and pitches. That's simply any day on the site that there are new pitches posted, you'll just get a summary sort of at about 2 in the morning or something like that of, uh, of all the pitches that were posted. It'll just be letting you know that you know, these you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 pitches were posted. And if you'd like, you can go out and, and uh, review them and get feedback. And the last one, actually, is, is probably the most important from a functional standpoint. And so you'll see, like the others, we can determine yes or no, and if I would like my account to be private. And I've set mine as private just as um, So the, the difference between these two functionally is that a uh, public account uh, allows the pitches to be seen publicly within the site, uh, and uh, they can actually even be seen. Uh, right now, there are some ways that they can be seen publicly, even uh, for folks that aren't logged in. So. The private uh, setting will make your, uh, your pitch totally private. And the, the, um, the, the challenge of that is that you'll actually need to invite people to be able to re review your pitches. So it won't be sort of shared broadly in the community. They'll be uh, only shared specifically with the people you want to share them with. And we, I'll show you how to, to invite people if that's something that you'd like. So, um, and then, you, of course, you could put an image up and put your, you know, your different social media um, URLs up as well. So uh, from there, we're just going to hit Save Changes. And I'm going to stop for just a moment. Are there any questions on setting up your account or setting up your profile? So this is Julie. I just want to um, I, I just want to emphasize that when you're talking about it's public and anyone can see it. You mean anyone in the group? That is not anyone anywhere, correct? There is a um, there is one link, and we're kind of we're working on uh, what specifically to do with it right now. Uh, but there is one link on our site that will allow um, uh, number one, people have to find your site. Uh, but then uh, number two, uh, which nobody knows that this site exists except for this community. Um, but there is a button on the site that would allow individuals to uh, see a posted, uh, see any of the posted pitches that aren't uh, from private uh, individuals. So uh, again, we, we're working through a bunch of different use cases and trying to make sure we solve this, uh, that question as best we can for, for everybody that's using the site. So if, if privacy is a concern, uh, then you just want to mark your, your uh, profile as private. Are there, are there questions on that? Cool. OK, well, we can certainly answer any questions offline as well. So um, so the next thing I'm going to do is do a walkthrough of how to create a pitch. And then um, and there will be a couple of steps here. One is, uh, in, in really, our first goal of the system is to help you draft the pitch, so to make sure that you include all the elements that are going to be a part of the judging process, and also to make sure that um, that it's really simple and easy to do. So we've kind of broken it down into very small steps. And then the next step is to uh, create a, a video of that, and then then to uh, and then to uh, associate the video with your uh, with your uh, pitch text. So I'm going to just click on Manage and Create Pitches. And you'll see I have a pitch already on the site, and we'll be able to look at that later. But where I'm going to click here is create a new introduction or pitch. And if you don't have a pitch already posted, this screen looks slightly different, but uh, it'll just have a, a create new introduction or pitch uh, maybe a little further to the left. So you should all now see on your screen a create a pitch step one. And so this because of how we're using it, um, there's just one choice here. And you're creating a business idea pitch, and it's for the Top Gun semifinal five-minute pitch. And so when I click to continue there, you'll see you should now be at 
create a pitch step two. And you'll see that this looks really a lot like a survey. And the whole goal of this is to help you very quickly get sort of the basic ideas around your business uh, and relative to your pitch down on, uh, down on paper or down on electrons uh, really quickly. And so again, this is the drafting process. So it's really about just sort of answering these various questions, putting in whatever responses are appropriate. And you know, it doesn't have to be complete thoughts. It can be even phrases or whatnot. But again, the whole idea is to get all those thoughts down in sort of one area. The more clear and, um, and well thought out, the better. But again, this is, you're going through a drafting process. And, and the goal is to get a draft posted quickly, get feedback, create a new draft, post, get feedback. And that's really how you see people improve uh, their communication skills. It's, it's not by being a perfectionist. It's really by practice. And um, so in any event, you go through this these uh, steps, answering these questions. If there is someone that does already have a draft that they want to post, it's really just as simple as putting any uh, character in each of these fields and then hitting um, save and continue. And you'll actually go on. All this information goes on to a text editor. And, and you can just paste in your, your text uh, to, the, uh, to the text editor and replace whatever characters uh, you put in to by, essentially bypass the, uh, the step. So I'm going to go back, actually, two screens. As opposed to creating a new pitch, I'm going to go back to the one that I've already posted that will kind of will show us the rest of the process. So we're now at uh, that next step. And you'll see that there's a text editor here. This is um, where essentially all that information that we put in that, those boxes flows to. And from here, it's really a matter of, of wordsmithing. You're not tied to keep things in, in any particular order. Again, you want your, your communication wants to align with how you're going to be judged. And you know, thinking about how those, you know, every pitch is going to be different, both by audience and also by um, really the content that you have. There are going to be some logical ways to reorder things that will make your content ultimately a better story. And that's really what you're doing as you're developing a pitch, is you're, you're bringing the audience on a journey. And so it's really about how do you craft it in a way that makes it most compelling. The other thing to note here on the screen is you'll see uh, down just under the text editor, there's uh, 142 words. There's a, a word counter here. And um, the, the pitch that I put in here, again, this is just sort of a, a sample pitch. but um, I think this was just a one-minute pitch. So for every minute of communication, typically you get about 150 words uh, for that. So this, with a five-minute pitch, this will keep you to 750 words. So you'll, you know, you'll have that uh, sort of constant reminder of where you are. And again, the goal is obviously not to go over time because then you know bad things happen, and we don't want that to happen. So. Um, so once you have your text, and again, the goal is to sort of move this process fairly quickly and not, not really stress about it being perfect, because again, it'll get much better with feedback. Then you're going to go on to create a video. And the, you know, up until now, you know, I think most of this is, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it, it will get a little more complicated, because you, you actually create your video. Um, through a couple of steps, and, and, uh, and they're not on the site. It, it happens off the site. So um, what, we're, what we would suggest, there's a, a tool called present.me, which uh, is a, a great site for recording videos with slides. And I believe for your program, you do have slides. And you'll, you'll see, actually, we've got um, here some, uh, on the right-hand side, some video uh, support material that will help you through this process of creating your video. So not only will we make this uh, the recording of today's session available, but these other video assets are available for you uh, for any questions as well. So we've, uh, I'm just going to click over to the present.me um, site. And we've actually created a relationship with present.me that uh, most people would have to pay for this service. And we've created a relationship where uh, they're actually allowing you all to 
uh, use their tool for free. And uh, so you do want to follow the link that we've provided. It's actually, this isn't publicly available. It's a unique link that uh, only our customers use. So I'll make sure that it's in any follow-up information. Uh, it's uh, certainly going to be in the video, but it's present.me forward slash plans forward slash free. Uh, we'll get and it's an HTTPS uh, URL. So uh, you'll go through this and, and just create your account. And again, it'll, it'll allow you to do this all for free. Uh, I'm going to go over to uh, my account here so that you can see how this works. And um, just we are getting a little bit of reverberation. Somebody may have their mute button off. Uh, just as a reminder that uh, mute will help us prevent any of the uh, any of the echo sounds. So I'm going to log into present.me, and, and it was funny. When I first came to this site, somebody had referred me to it. Um, I was able to create a video with slides, um, and that was probably like a five-minute video in about 10 minutes. It's a really super intuitive site. I, I found it to be fantastic. So you should now be at a site that says uh, present dot, uh, or it's a, a upload um, a screen, and it's a sort of a gray uh, bottom half. And you'll see uh, it uh, has a step one, and it's really just a matter of, uh, you'll see here the, the left option is slides and video. And it's really just a matter of uploading your, um, your video and then you can choose to record a video. I'm, I'm sorry, I said uh, upload a video. You actually, in, for most of us, you're going to record a video, which you can do through this site. But you'll upload your slides and record the video. That's the option that I've found to be best. You can also upload a video if you have one. Then I suppose, and I haven't gone through this process, but I suppose then you have to somehow synchronize it with your slide advancement. Uh, someone doesn't have their mute on, and we can hear some background noise, just as a reminder. And um, so in any event, you're just simply in step two here going to be selecting your file. And so you can just you know, either navigate to upload a file, go to Google Docs, or uh, drop a Prezi in here. Really up to you. And then it, it's very intuitive from here. You'll just go on to um, uh, to. Uh, it actually allows you to have your slides on the screen and talk to them at the same time that you're you're able to advance them. So you're actually going to see on the screen, and I'll go to a video that I've created um, so you can actually see what, whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing here. Oh, my home. Sorry. But I don't go out to this every day, so it's just getting the navigation. Okay, so here's a... Here's a video that I created a while ago, and um, the uh, so the way this works, you'll see as I play it that it will actually have the slides and me on the screen at the same time. And you know, when you're when you're doing these, certainly it's a lot of us. It's easier to sit down and and do this, but certainly I would I would try to get in the mode like you're going to be when you're uh, presenting at Top Gun. So if you can, stand up and uh, do your slides at the same time. I'll just play a second or two of this so you can see. It was it was it certainly wasn't in the winter. It was in the summer. The ceiling fan's on. Uh, but you're essentially going through the slides, and, and you're able to talk at the same time. I think I'm probably using a lot of my bandwidth right now, so it's going kind of slow. But uh, you can get a sense for how this works. And, and again, it makes it much easier to, for the reviewer to see both your slides and your presentation style at the, same, at the same time. So the way we find it's best to record these, and I guess I would probably have a question on that, is um, I will either typically use my phone or, um, or my uh, tablet, although in this case where you're going to be uh, recording and advancing slides at the same time, you'll probably just want to use either your computer, uh, either your laptop or your, or your desktop. And it, you'll see with mine here, I was using my laptop, and it was much lower than I was. You'll get much better quality if you can put the camera somehow up higher. Uh, then you're not looking down. You're actually able to look up 
uh, and keep eye contact with the camera and just advance the slides or even have somebody else advance the slides, whatever's best for you. Again, the goal isn't really to have a perfect video. The goal is to have uh, something that people can react to and, and really review so that you get uh, better and better feedback and you can continue to sort of improve your skills over the next uh, 30 days or so um, until, the, until you're actually doing it uh, um, you know, live and, and so on. And, uh, but again, it's a, it's a real iter iterative process. So when your video is done, and I, I, you know, having done this a bunch of times, I'll, I'll promise you your ability to pitch will improve significantly just by videotaping it without even seeing the video. Just going through this formal process will significantly move you um, uh, to being more and more fluent. And then, of course, as you see your uh, video, you'll critique yourself. Uh, and then, of course, other people, once you post it, other people will be able to critique you and give you, know, you really that valuable feedback, both on your uh, presentation style and, and communication ability plus on your slides. So it'll be a real comprehensive review. So once you're set here, and, it, and again, it, I'm probably taking too long to even describe this because it's a really intuitive system. Um, but it, again, to, for me to do a five minute um, video on here for, for the very first time coming to the site, the whole thing took me about 10 minutes. I was actually blown away how easy it was. So the one thing that you're going to need to go back to the Test My Pitch site once you've created your video is what's called an embed code. And you'll see on the screen here below, below the video, uh, right in the middle of the download and the share buttons is the embed button. And that's what you want. That's the, what that means is essentially this code will bring, uh, will allow your video to play on the, on the Test My Pitch site. So you want to be able, you want to just copy that uh, that information out, and so we're just going to copy it to the clipboard, and uh, and then go back to the test my pitch site, and that video embed code would simply go right in that space, and uh, we'll just paste it right in there, and that will be our our video embed code, and we'll save changes, and this video will now uh, this and this is a different video than what, what we had just a moment ago, this video will now be uh, posted on the site so that people can review it. So I'm going to stop for a moment um, again and kind of pause. If you want to uh, ask a question or whatnot, feel free to take your phone off mute. Uh, are there any questions about creating and posting a pitch? I have a question. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. this is Kai. Yeah, hi, Kai. I'm wondering. Um, if, if we have, you know, let's say we're in a group of two or more people, um, mm -hmm. should these videos, for the sake of the, the nature of the pitch, should we always have both individuals in the video, or is it better to just have kind of one person, or, you know, schedule times where we're together and we, you know, do it together each, for each draft revision? No, that's a good, good, really good question. So I guess the, I guess the way I'd respond to that is, uh, I guess, two things. One, I'm assuming from the way you're asking the question is that you're going to have at least two people who are part of the presentation. Is that correct? Yeah, I think generally we would, you know, we're, we have two co-founders. Yeah, and both would be, would be a part of presenting. So um, it's certainly preferred that you're, that you're together because they're, um, you know, you may, if you, you, I'm sure you could even figure out a way to do it via Google Hangouts, where you could uh, co-record it and and then bring it on to present.me with the slides. It make it a little, it make it a little difficult if you know. But if you guys uh, are, it's more difficult for you to be together. That might even be an option. Um, no, no, this is yeah. even, If I could just chime in here, um, sure. of course, we've never done video pitching for Top Gun before, but we have certainly had lots of uh, teams of Top Guns before. And often there's one who pitches who's a stronger pitcher. And I think, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've only ever once or twice had two pitchers sharing the pitching. That's correct. So I think ideally this might work better if you take the one person. And if you really feel that you need to have 
too, that that would, that would make the pitch a more compelling pitch to have both of you, um, then certainly we can do that. But it's, I think ideally it might work better if you take the, the stronger of the communicators and have them make the pitch. Okay. I might, I might also add to that, too, is you, you always want to think about your audience, and, and certainly you don't want to, you know, uh, favor one person over another. That's not really the goal. But, the, you know, when you think about the, your audience, um, more often than not, the audience has – it takes a few moments for an audience to adjust to someone's voice and their, their cadence and so on. And if you switch back and forth between individuals, then you're risking sort of losing the audience's ability to understand everything that's being said. Now, there's not a 100% rule with any of this stuff, and some people can add incredible value by being a second or third onto a pitch. But more, and I think, you know, to, to uh, Susan's point is, you know, more often than not, uh, uh, you do see people favor just sort of one person communicating so that it does keep things simple and consistent and, and maybe more favors the listener. Does that, that make sense? Perfect. Yep. Cool. Um, cool. Other, any other questions so far? Uh, Bill, this is Kim. I have yeah. a question back a few slides. Uh, there was the video and slide option, and then mm -hmm. there was a separate audio option. Um, do we have to, to hit anything? Do we have to hit an audio option in order to get our audio in with the video, or is it just linked well, that way? Yeah, the, when you're recording your video, it will also have audio at the same time. That, that's kind of a normal uh, part of it. Right. Sorry, I think I went back one too far. Um, but the, um, yeah, I think, I w I think you're going to be in the left-hand side here on this screen where you're, where you're working with slides and video, because video includes audio. I think this is this sort of second one from the left is uh, more where you would not have video but would have slides and okay. an, you know, just a right. just somebody's voice. Right. Okay. Make, Thanks. Yeah. There I'm just checking. Yeah, I, I understand there's a lot of new choices here and um, I, I you know based on my use of this site, I, I found that this left this left side is really where you want to focus for, for your for your purposes. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Absolutely. Cool. Well, why don't we uh, do this? Uh, this is oh, Paul. yeah, sure. Yep. Hi, Hi there. I had a quick question about, uh, real quick, something you touched on earlier. The If we check for make my profile or, or pitch private, it's actually profile private, does that mean the Top Gun um, group can still see it? Or private means literally no one can see the, the pitch? That's a yeah, great question. So, yeah, private truly means private. You will, you'll be an island of one, and I'll show you, in fact, that's not a bad, uh, bad place to show you how to invite people. It's actually super simple how to invite people to see your, your uh, pitch. Um, so in, you're just simply going to go to this invite mentor, and, uh, and that just by putting in their name and their email, uh, you'll invite them in to be able to give you feedback. So, again, right now it's a sort of very limited likelihood that anyone, if you weren't private on this site, that anyone would see your pitch. But there is a there is a risk, and I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to say that there isn't. Um, and um, but if you if you do have that concern, that it's simply a matter of inviting people who you would want to uh, give you feedback on your pitch. So, um, you you know, we've had you know. You know, now, you know, up thousands of people on this site, and we've never had an, an issue. And, and most of the most of the sites that we deploy for folks aren't aren't even private or allow uh, private, um, uh, you know, members or uh, private individuals. So uh, the you know the, we have yet to have any issue where somebody's complained that you know somebody saw an idea or anything like that. So, but again, there is a possibility. So it really well, depends this, on your. This is Julie. And I just want to say for anyone who is concerned about their privacy, that they should be marking themselves private. What I'm going to do after this call is send out an email list um, of all of the Top Gun 
emails so that you could copy and paste that into Invite Mentors. So I just wanted to, um, if anyone is concerned about that, then um, just let me know that you want it. I'll send that out. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. And anything else? The only other thing that I was going to go over is, is uh, how do you review a pitch, and uh, and that'll kind of bring us bring us home. But before I do that, is there anything else that anyone had a question on? Cool. So, in order to actually, uh, you know, right now I'm in an account where I've posted a pitch. Now I want to go in an account where I can look at that pitch as a reviewer. So I, I need to go in as a, sort of a different persona. So I'm just logging out, and I'm going to log back in as a as a different individual. That's really actually the ch my challenge with this is I have so many different personas it, it, <laughs> it gets confusing as to who I am. And strangely, I've named them all Bill, which is really odd. But um, I need to come up with different names, I think. So, okay, so we're back on the site. We're a different user. And again, just to point out for you, on the right here, um, there's actually a, a, our full uh, video, help video playlist is over to the right. So that's here for any questions. And, and there's no video. I think the longest video is four minutes, and most of them are one to two minutes. So these are all really simple, quick bites, uh, and will pretty much answer, I think, most any question uh, on the site. So I'm going to now, you'll see we're uh, back on, a pro, on the uh, user homepage, which I'm just actually going to go out to the site's homepage and show you how you get to the user homepage. And you can do this from anywhere. So all you're going to do, is, and sometimes you may, you may go out to the, sort of the main site, all you have to do is go back up to where you logged in. And, and what will be in that space is back to member homepage. We'll just click on that. And that brings us back to this screen. So from wherever you are on the site, just go up to that right-hand corner anytime you want to come back to this page. And this is kind of your primary navigation page as a, as a logged in user of the site. So I'm going to go to um, down to browse pitches. And again, it's for our current purpose, we just have one type of pitch on the site. So we're going to go to the business idea pitches. And oh, because that's a private pitch. Oh, yeah. So let's, in, let's invite this person in. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Let me, let me do this. I'll, I'll unprivatize myself. All right, I wanted to have that set for private, and then I made, made. So you see how privacy works. <laughs> I think we've, we've uh, shown that it works. One second. I'm going to update my profile. Uh, Bill, myself. it sounds like if I could say, speak to this. This is Paul Gurney, the person who emailed you over the weekend. Um, it sounds like a lot of pain could be solved. Like if all of us want pr our pitches private, we're all going to, as it seems like, we're going to need to paste in 35 classmates plus all of our mentors in order for anyone to see anybody's pitches. So it's, it, from, is that understanding correct right now? That, that would be correct. Paul, well, if you want. Paul, this that is huge. Oh, hey, Susan. Um, hey, how are you? I, I see you. Here and I think you are absolutely correct. And Julie was um, planning to email the Top Gun participants emails so we could make that part easy. I think the thought was that we wouldn't include mentors initially; that we would make it peer review only. I so, see. You know, someone had okay. an issue with that. Well, that makes sense. But but there's going to be 35 of us having to paste in 35 times 35 emails. And as a software developer, I know there's a solution, a technology solution that should be simpler, Bill. If you just let everyone related to Top Gun see each other's by default, then no one has to do any work except one programmer tweaking something. Like basically, if user Paul Gurney is part of Top Gun, then allow other users part of Top Gun to see his pitches if he did not check you know, private. So it's like a cohort can be opened up with a few lines of code. Um, and I'm not telling you how to run your site, but uh, it seems like while these are works in progress, we don't want them discovered by the world. Um, and it's all too easy for emails to be scraped by Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo. They all scrape URLs, and they do find their way to 
uh, search engines. And I know that with our first client, we had Gmail and Chrome, you know, submitting URLs uh, in something that was obscure was discovered and gotten some hot water over that. So anyway, just from uh, personal experience, uh, there is a solution. Um, so anyway, just my two cents or five cents as it may be. Well, that may have been a full quarter, but uh, thank you. Um, so we'll take a look at it. Again, the site is what the site is today. Um, we may be able to make some enhancements, which we'll, we'll look at. Um, but uh, there is a, there's a limitation to, um, you know, <laughs> so essentially we have to consider every uh, sort of customer's needs uh, and, and, make, and make changes as we go. But that, that's helpful. And uh, so we're now taking a look at a posted pitch. And we're just going to go, we're now logged in as a different user than posted the pitch. So we'll be able to see the text. We'll be able to come down and bring in our present.me content. So this is our slides and our pitch guy happening at the same time. And then once uh, you've been able to both read and or watch the pitch, you can then uh, come down and uh, give rating on the five criteria that are part of Top Gun. So you'll see scalability, viability, feasibility, innovation, and presentation. And of course, it's a five scale, and you can add additional comments. And when we look at what comments to make, usually we uh, sort of the, the best rules we found are if it's not a five, and the comments are really about how could it become a five. Uh, that's really the goal. And then, of course, you save rating. Um, one other comment to make on these, because I, I have the good fortune to uh, go to a lot of pitch events. In, in the last year, I've been to well over 100, and um, which is scary. And as you guys can imagine, it's a lot of pizza. Um, but uh, the, the thing that, that is going to be most valuable for you all, and I, I know uh, group dynamics are, tends to be um, a desire to not hurt anyone's feelings, and that's not really the goal. but but you're not doing anybody any service unless you give them good feedback. And so I would really, um, I guess my primary suggestion would be to uh, be as, as direct and honest as you can. And on the other hand, receive the feedback uh, in a way that, um, that you're, you're cognizant of uh, the fact that it's being given with good intention. And, and that's, you know, that's really the, uh, uh, the key to, to all of this is to make sure that you're, you know, really open to it, and, and that uh, you know you're not you're not obligated to take any feedback uh, and make changes based on it. But you know, you are we all are, are we'll we'll all probably do best if we at least uh, listen to it and, and evaluate its its uh, merit for what we're trying to do. So um, in any event, any uh, questions at all? Oh, I should also tell you that. Once there are, uh, once people have begun to give you feedback, you'll actually have below the pitch uh, and below the the form, you'll actually have all the feedback scorecards uh, will be in populating below there in chronological order. So you'll you know, begin to be able to see what kind of feedback you're getting. But uh, any questions about the reviewing side? Cool. Um, I'll take that silence as, uh, as no questions. Um, so just going back to the member homepage, um, you know, just any, any other questions at all about um, how this, this system works? So just to sort of summarize, you know, I guess the things that we found best in this, in this system, and again, the whole goal of this is to help you develop your communication skills as quickly as possible. So our best suggestion is that you um, draft and post reasonably quickly, not worrying too much about perfection, because it's, you know, it's, it's actually a lot like a lean, the lean startup concept. You know, the lean startup idea is really about how, how many pivots can you get 
with a with a certain amount of resource, and you know you only have about sort of whatever it is, but roughly about 30 days to sort of practice your pitch using uh, test my pitch. And it's really about how do you get as many sets of feedback um, in that time. Maybe maybe you can do a weekly post or maybe even a semi-weekly post, uh, but where each one of those is iteratively ideally better and you're fine-tuning as you go forward. But you'll find with each time that you, that you do that, um, you're going to get a new series of comments, new perspectives, and um, and and you'll you'll find you'll you'll get to a place where not only this pitching is it's two things it's it's what's the content what are you going to say um, but that's really only half the battle the other is how do you say it and your it's you know not just your style and all that uh, quite often the best pitchers are the most confident as well and and it's not you know gregarious or any of that it's it's that they they have a Sort of a, a sense of what of uh, and, a, and a real um, grasp of what they're saying in a way that allows them to deliver this material. Um, and it's just much more compelling than than people who aren't as well polished or practiced. So um, you know, there's only as they say, there's only one way to get to Carnegie Hall, and that's practice, practice, practice. So, um, but uh, uh, is there? I, I think. I've kind of come to the end of the things I was hoping to share with you guys today. Are there any other questions or uh, any thoughts? Is there anyone that didn't receive the email inviting them into the site that we need to address? Uh, Bill, a quick question about the visibility of pitches. It says uh, there's a choice for expert only. Uh, are the mentors we invite considered the experts, or is that a different designation? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use that function now. It does. It, it, it's certainly something that at some point, um, you know, could use. But it does require um, someone administratively to promote individuals to being expert. And so we haven't. Uh, Susan and Julie and I haven't talked about uh, sort of making mentors experts, which is easy. It's not a big deal. But it's just. I wouldn't, let's not use it yet because, again, there are, no, there are no experts on the site today. So it's another way to create privacy. <laughs> um, so you know, I, I would suggest you want to be more open and you'll, you'll get a lot more feedback. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, good this question. Is, uh, this is Ruben. Hey, Ruben. I just wanted to point out uh, one thing on, uh, I guess, the graphical slide aspect um, just to everyone that uh, given the format, whatever you determine your minimum font size for a normal presentation is going to have to be twice the size. Uh, so you may want to consider that so you don't have a separate set of slides that you develop for your large presentation and then one for this split screen presentation. Why are you saying they need to be larger? I guess we haven't experienced that. Uh, when a, in a split screen situation like this, your slides are half the size that they would be in a full screen situation. Right. Yeah, I guess you, yeah, I, I, you certainly could do that. I, I, we haven't seen a situation where you need to change your font, but if, if that makes you more comfortable, you certainly can. Uh, just, yeah. just letting people know that if you're preparing slides like in Keynote and you're used to seeing them at full screen, which is equivalent to the same as being on, on stage with a full screen, down to 50 percent, you know, your minimum font size is going to be illegible. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, we, we usually, a uh, normal rule for slides for pitches is you don't want any font on the slides that are less than, um, than uh, you know, 30, uh, 30 pixels high. So, um, you know, you're, we're dealing with pretty big font anyway, I would think. Um, Great. Bill, this is Susan. Um, I just yeah. wanted to say that I did go into Present Me like six weeks ago, and I did make a presentation. And one thing that I discovered is none of the slides can have any video, or I couldn't um, make transitions work. So I just wanted everyone to understand that you'll, you will be limited um, compared to what you might be used to when using something like PowerPoint. The slides seem to be stagnant, stagnant unless there's some change I'm not aware of. I, yeah, I guess I didn't notice that uh, there was a transition problem. The, the, again, sort of a, a lot of um, pitch um, philosophy um, in, in terms of 
slides are are that you really simplify your slides anyway. And I, I again, I don't I don't know about whether Presents.me allows that or not because all the slides I do uh, for pitches anyway don't have transitions and they don't have videos because you can't rely on videos working. I, I, 50% of the time, at least, that I see people try to use video that doesn't work as much as they practice with it and as much as they test it. And and transitions, it just confuses your audience. Um, so, I, again, I, I didn't check that simply because it wasn't something that uh, uh, that, that we do for, for pitch slides. But, well, um, I, I just didn't want people to spend a lot of time perfecting, you know, an experience that, like, PowerPoint could give you if you wanted to have talking points that coincided with, a, you know, a transition because it didn't seem to work for me in present mm. me. Cool. No, that's a good good point for sure. Um, cool. Any other questions or comments? I have a follow-up question. This is Brendan at the Mid Coast Group. I, I noticed the logo has the content. Would that transition comment that, that uh, apply equally to Prezi, which is sort of, you know, inherently still present, still uh, images transition periods? It's a real good question. Uh, I haven't brought a Prezi into this, um, so I'm, I, I, you know, I've used Present.me several times, but I haven't used all the functionality. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I, I don't know. I wish I could, could answer that perfectly. But it looks like you can bring in both uh, types of PowerPoint file, a PDF, a Google Doc, and and Prezi from the from the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and you can change a Prezi into a PDF, can't you? Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, you know, Prezi is basically just uh, mind mapping. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's all of your images are actually in one space, and you sort of zoom in and out. Um, sure. Of that. Yeah. No, I've, I've used it. Just I, I haven't tried to bring it into present.me yet. Um, oh, yeah. All I can suggest is to is to try and see what it see how it works. Yep. yep. Thanks. Yeah. And and if you you must already have a Prezi, you could just bring in and and just just see. But you know, the, the, this this site's been around for a while, so I'm I'm yeah you know, I'm pretty sure what they have up probably works pretty well. Um, but any other. Questions? Cool. Well, we're going to make this recording available. So, um, you know, certainly, you know, this will be a reference. Plus, there are already all the support videos that are on the site that you know should answer, you know, like 90, 99 percent of the questions. Uh, but, but certainly, feel free to reach out if if there's anything beyond that that you need or we can help with. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank